folks, welcome to another art studio chat. Rod Moore from Learn to Paint Academy with you again. Welcome to my studio. So in this episode, I want to talk to you about the five ways that you can create greater depth in your painting when you understand aerial perspective. So the very first thing we have to keep in mind when we're talking about depth in a painting and aerial perspective is that we are painting on a two-dimensional surface. Okay, so I'm talking to painters here. Um, it's a two-dimensional surface. We have height and we have width. However, when you look at the subject, in reality, we're, we're painting a three-dimensional subject. It also has depth in it. So as artists, our job is to represent that depth on a two-dimensional surface, to take a three-dimensional world and put it onto a two-dimensional surface. And that can be a challenge, but the five uh, techniques I'm going to share with you will help you to be able to create a sense of realism on a two-dimensional surface and you know, develop that depth into your painting. And that depth gives uh, you know, a real sense of, uh, of having captured the, the, the subject matter. And people, you'll look at them in galleries and exhibitions and they'll stop at paintings that have a real sense of depth and uh, it's a little bit mesmerizing for them. There's a few other things that are also mesmerizing, like reflections in the water. But certainly if you can capture depth, capture that sense of a three-dimensional world on a two-dimensional surface, then you'll be really on the track to creating paintings that really resonate with people who love landscape, seascape painting. So the very first way of utilizing aerial perspective and creating a sense of depth is understanding temperature, color temperature. So the old rule is that warm colors come forward and cool colors recede into the background. Now it's a, it's a bit of an illusion, right? So in many ways, capturing a three-dimensional world on a two-dimensional surface is a bit of an illusion. So there's some techniques which I'm sharing with you that'll help create that illusion. So if you understand that warm colors come forward, cool colors go back into the distance, then you're on the right path automatically. Now, if you've ever been out in the country, driving down a country road and in the distance, you see a mountain range and it looks sort of like bluey gray. Well, why is that? And this is where the warm colors come forward, cool colors go back. What happens is the more space or the more atmosphere between you and the object you're looking at, the bluer and grayer it becomes. And we'll talk about the gray aspect in a moment. Uh, because in distance, out of your three primary colors, your blue, your red, and your yellow, the first color that disappears in distance is yellow. And then the red disappears. And then finally you're left with a bluey gray tone in the distance, right? There's a region in New South Wales called the Blue Mountains. Why are they called that, right? Because from a distance, they look blue. Uh, same with the Grampians in Victoria and many of the places up here in Queensland. So warm colors are gonna come forward, cool colors come back. So if you have a look at this little painting I'm working on, um, this is in the style of Robert Hagen, who you know has influenced me with his figurative work. I've taken a photo of my wife on the beach. This is Sunshine Beach in, in Queensland, near where I live. And you'll notice that the mountain range in the background here is a bluey gray color. And it's cool, right? In the foreground here, I've got these yellows and reds and pinks in her dress. So that helps to aid that sense of depth and distance in the painting. Warm colors come forward, cool colors go back. Great strategy to use to help create depth. Now, the second way of creating a sense of aerial perspective or depth in a painting is to understand saturation of the paint. Now, when you squeeze paint out of a tube, it's highly saturated. And when you look at a landscape, there's very little in it that's highly saturated, right? So you need to understand how to reduce the saturation. Another way of thinking about that is to, uh, well, some people call it chroma, reduce the chroma. But in reality, what we're doing is graying off the color. So if I had a, a red, for instance, um, there's a few different ways you can gray off a red, but red is one of the three primary colors. If you add the other two, it'll start to gray the red down. Okay. Um, or you can add the complement of the red. So the complement of red is green, the other two primaries combined. And if you add a bit of green to your red, it will start to gray it back. It'll reduce the saturation. So here's the key. When things are in the distance here, right, 
the they're not the colour's not saturated. It's always greyed off. If you if I stood here in a red t-shirt and then I had somebody stand a kilometre away in a red t-shirt, my red t-shirt is going to look more vibrant and vivid and more highly saturated in colour. My friend a kilometre away is going to be a greyed version of that, right? So knowing that we can have more saturated colours in the foreground and we can have greyed off reduced saturation colours in the background and that will create a sense of depth in your painting as well. Now the number three way of creating a sense of depth and atmosphere and an aerial perspective is through the use of values. Now I'm going to do a separate video on values because I think they're so important. Uh, we talk about them in our colour mixing course and through a lot of our courses at Learn to Paint Academy. Values is darkness to lightness. So the, the, the golden rule of thumb is that as things recede into the distance, they become lighter in value, generally speaking, right? So if I had another person over here in the distance, the same person, the darks in here are going to be darker up close than the darks we would put in the person in the distance. Um, so values, darkness to lightness. Your darkest objects want to be in your foreground and your lighter objects want to be in the distance. So as things recede into the distance, they become lighter in value. Right? And that's why if you've seen uh, any episodes of our Learn to Paint TV, I always start off, you know, step two, the blocking is really about setting up a value structure. Darks in the foreground, middle distance it gets lighter, and then our lightest values in the distance. So keep that in mind, um, use a value structure, darkest darks in the foreground, lightest lights in the background. Now the number four way of creating a sense of depth and aerial perspective of a painting, and this is often overlooked, and certainly when you're starting out as a beginner, um, you don't often hear people talking about edges, right? Now, if you can start to incorporate the use of edges, into your painting early on in your career, then you will greatly benefit as you progress and develop. What do I mean by edges? Well, hard edges draw attention. Soft edges sort of blend into the background. So you don't want to have hard edges on say a mountain range in the background here because the eye will be drawn to that. And if that's not our main subject, that's not where we want the eye going, right? So if I had all hard edges along here, uh, then the eye would go be naturally drawn to that. Where I want my harder edges is going to be in my highlight and, and edging out this uh, figure um, against the background. Okay, so that's my main subject. I want to have harder edges and everything else, softer edges. Okay, and if you keep that in mind, um, things in the distance are going to be softer. Okay, softer in edges and a little bit disappearing, what they call a lost edge, disappearing into the sky there, that the edge of that mountain there. And, and the same here, that's this edge here disappears into the mountain range in behind it, okay? And notice also from our previous um, uh, discussions that this is the lighter in value than this headland. So I've got two headlands here. They're probably in reality the same size, but because this one's further away, there's greater depth, it's lighter in value, it's cooler, so it's bluer, and it's grayer than the more saturated tones in this headland here. Okay, but I'm getting off track. Number four is edges. Hard edges come forward and command attention. Soft edges recede into the distance. Knowing that, you can put hard edges around your main subject, and you can put your soft edges for things that need to go into the distance. Okay, finally, number five way of creating a sense of depth and aerial perspective in your painting is proportions. So if you have a look at my painting here, I've got my main figure from a photo of my wife uh, is larger than the figures in the background. Imagine if I would painted the ones that are further away in distance, if I would painted them the same size, it just wouldn't work. It wouldn't look right. You'd lose that sense of depth and distance that's in there. So um, because they're you know, 500, to a, 500 meters to a kilometer away, they're obviously gonna be a lot smaller, okay? Um, and also notice where they s sit on the ground, okay? So proportions is a really important part of creating a sense of aerial perspective and depth in your painting.
So there you go, folks. There's five ways to create a greater sense of depth and aerial perspective in your painting. Number one, color temperature. Warm colors come forward. Cool colors go into the background. Number two is saturation. Highly saturated colors in the foreground and then grade off colors in the background. That's number two. Number three is values. Your darkest darks in the foreground and your lighter values in the distance. So when you do your blocking, that's a good time to set up your value structure in the painting. Number four was all about edges. Soft edges in the distance, harder edges on your main subject, which is generally you know, more in your middle distance or foreground. Hard edges draw attention, soft edges sort of recede back into the background. So that's another way of creating aerial perspective. And number five is of course proportions. You don't wanna have the same objects in the same size if you're trying to create a sense of depth in your painting. Use those five tips and I'm sure you'll start to paint more realistic paintings, um, especially landscape and seascape, and you'll get a greater sense of depth and start to create that illusion of a three-dimensional world existing on a two-dimensional surface. Hope that's helped. I'm off to finish this painting. I'll chat with you soon on Art Studio Chat. Cheers for now.